Reintroducing a concept proposed by physicist Gerard O'Neill of Princeton, O'Neill envisioned the design of self-sustaining worlds that could hold entire cities, accompanied with agricultural areas, national parks, and all the comforts of Earth. Scaling this concept of O'Neill cylinders, Bezos explained that they could eventually sustain mil trillions of people living in these off-world colonies. O'Neill first put forth the concept of rotating groups of cylinders in 1974. O'Neill's concept of his habitats would replicate Earth conditions in all ways while orbiting in space. Though well-respected, well-known, and revolutionary, many of his colleagues at the time perceived his ideas as excessively ambitious. O'Neill actually went as far as to outline the science and calculations for building these cylinder habitats, which would be more comfortable, productive, and luxurious than Earth. In his landmark paper published in 1974 in the journal Physics Today, O'Neill admitted to making conservative cost predictions. However, with improving carbon nanotechnology, diminishing 3D printing costs, these costs may be reduced and were perhaps more liberal than he anticipated. To a wide audience, Bezos elaborated that these would be, quote, very large structures, miles on end, they would hold a million people or more. Similar to the concept of space habitats depicted in the film Elysium, Bezos romanticized the concept of space habitats, explaining that they could have the most beautiful climates at all times, like, quote, Maui on its best day all year long, end quote. Ultimately, Bezos envisions these space colonies being capable of sustaining trillions of people. Here's an artistic rendering of one of the habitats that Bezos displayed for his Blue Origin presentation in Washington, D.C. To the right sits the Geisel Library at University of California, San Diego, and in the background, a city replicating Seattle's skyline is depicted. Bezos has previously given hints to his ambitions to colonize space. However, this was the first time that Bezos comprehensively presented the magnitude of his grand vision. According to Bezos, reusable rockets are just the beginning. Colossal, luxurious, cylindrical ring worlds are the end game. In effect, Bezos finally pulled back the curtain and finally showed the world where his real ambitions for space flight dwell. Bezos envisions the O'Neill structures as being opportunistic homes for humanity's future generations to live and flourish. This is another artistic rendering of one of the gargantuan O'Neill space habitats featuring Florence in the foreground and the forbidden city in the distance. <clears throat> Eventually, with diminishing costs of manufacturing and improving technologies, these cities would be able to replicate cities on Earth, or they could incorporate futuristic styles. In a more intimate way, Bezos displayed his larger-than-life power to use like nature when he explained, quote, We get to choose. Do we want stasis and rationing, or do we want dynamism and growth? This is an easy cho choice. We know what we want, we just have to get busy." End quote. What's amazing about this quote of Bezos and his presentation is that it ultimately revolutionizes current international concepts of space habita habitation, like the International Space Station. Bezos doesn't envision rash and miniature scale, bunker styled, minimum living quarters in cities. Bezos in visualizing these space habitats as places of abundance, luxury, and wealth. In a way, he's right. Scale and size become negligible in space with the proper technology. From carbon nanotechnology to robotics and 3D printing, Bezos understands more than what he detailed in his presentation. Though Bezos admits to his utopian vision as being extremely far off, he idealizes a world that humans will be able to live on peacefully and abundantly, rather than growing on precarious and inhospitable planets like Mars. As Bezos explained, quote, if we're out in the solar system, we can have a trillion humans in the solar system, which means we'd have a thousand Mozarts and a thousand Einsteins, 
This would be an incredible civilization. So, when will this happen? Bezos didn't give any timeline as his company, Blue Moon, is just getting started with projects. However, the first steps are being made. So, when do you think this will happen? Can humanity do this amidst the constant threats of terrorism and mass shootings? Would you want to live on one of these space habitats? And do you think they should be designed in futuristic ways or should we replicate models of historical structures and cities? And what do you think the biggest benefit of creating these cities will be? Please share your comments below and don't forget to hit subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.